السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسولنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله In the name of God, the most merciful, the most compassionate, the Lord of the whole universe. All praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Lord of the whole universe. I bear witness that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Happy Sunday, dear brothers and sisters. Welcome to our Quranic tafsir. And if you remember, last time we have started uh, on the story of Ibrahim السلام, from Surah Al-Baqarah. Of course, there are so many stories in the Quran about uh, beloved Prophet Ibrahim السلام, But this part is one of the uh, you know, extensive uh, portion part about Ibrahim السلام. And if you were part of uh, this discussion last Sunday, we have started from uh, the verse number 124 from Surah Al-Baqarah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala started with وَإِذِبْتَلَ إِبْرَاهِيمَ رَبُّهُ بِكَلِمَاتٍ فَأَتَمَّهُنْ So we have discussed all the way until verse 126. And then if you were part of it, I just would like to remind uh, us uh, there were some lessons that we learned from the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam. And the first one was to be close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, show your love and obedience to him. Just like Ibrahim alayhi salam, Khalilullah, the intimate, the close friend of Allah. And then the second lesson was when you pray, pray for others, not only for yourself, but also remember others, especially your progeny as well. Like, just like Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam, remember from the, the verses that we have discussed last time. And then the third lesson was, Ibrahim alayhi salam established the Tawheed, unity of God, and fought against polytheism. And we mentioned uh, the different types of polytheism or the shirk we call in Arabic language or the Islamic, in Islamic terminology. Shirk could be major or minor. So uh, learn from the lesson of Ibrahim alayhi salam and uh, shun from all sorts of uh, polytheism or shirk associating others with God. And the uh, next one was, if you wish your du dua to be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, be loyal to the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And again, we learned this from the story of Ibrahim. And finally, we said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was giving order to Ibrahim and his son Ismail saying that, keep the house of God pure and clean. So from this, we you know, got the lesson of keeping the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, masajid, the place of worship, physically and spiritually clean. So those were the lessons that uh, we have reflected upon uh, until the verse 126 from Surah Al-Baqarah. Now, in this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says here, وَإِذْ قَالَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ he said, and remember, when Ibrahim said, my Lord, make this city, the city of Mecca, a place of security and provide its people with fruits, such of them as believe in Allah and the last day. So here we see that Still, Ibrahim السلام, is concerned not only about himself, but he's still thinking ahead. You know, he's thinking about his progeny, his um, uh, grandkids that will follow him. So he's saying that make this place, the city of uh, Mecca, uh, a place of security. And then also not only that, because it was in the middle of nowhere, it's desert. So he was asking from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, give sustenance those who are going to come after him. But also he mentioned one thing, please pay attention to that part. It is not only just any progeny. He said, Man amana minhum billahi wal yawmil akhir. That, that distinguishes people from other people. If you have faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you are 
on the right path, if you are doing righteous deeds, and if you are worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you are moral and ethical, then you are a special uh, kind of people in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, Allah said, Qal, وَمَنْ كَفَرَ فَأُمَتِّعُهُ قَلِيلًا ثُمَّ أَضَّرُّهُ إِلَىٰ عَذَابِ النَّارِ وَبِئْسَ الْمَصِيرِ So as for those, or him, who disbelieves him or her, I shall leave him in contentment for a while. So he's saying that if he works hard, he gets the result here in the, in the face of the earth. And then, you know, he will enjoy the fruits of his labor or her labor. But at the end of the day, he said, you know, ثُمَّ so I would like to get your attention to the word qalila. So when you compare the life here, enjoyment, it is qalil, it's small, it is minute when you compare to the one coming next. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you know, this is a um, sunnatullah, we say, the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whoever works hard gets, you know, uh, the result in this world and he enjoys for such a short time, period of time. But the eternal bliss is for those who have faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then do righteous deeds. And then we added later worship and ethics and the morals. So after the delights that the disbeliever enjoyed in this life, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I will make his or her destination is unfortunately the fire. So, and then the next verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying here, now the subject is uh, switching from the last time that we have started uh, since وَإِذِي بِتَلَى إِبْرَاهِيمَ 124. And then we came here, 127. The story is shifting and changing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about how the Kaaba was built by Ibrahim and Ismail alayhim as -salam. Peace be upon both of them. And he said, وَإِذْ يَرْفَعُوا إِبْرَاهِيمُ الْقَوَاعِدَ مِنَ الْبَيْتِ وَإِسْمَاعِيلُ رَبَّنَا تَقَبَّلْ مِنَّا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ السَّمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ And remember, when Ibrahim and his son Ismail were raising the foundation of the Kaaba, while they were doing that, they were praying uh, and asking from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that they said, رَبَّنَا تَقَبَّلْ مِنَّا Our Lord, accept this service from us. إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ السَّمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ And they are praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Verily, you are the hearer. You will hear our du'as. Um, you know, and, and then you also know what we are doing. Quranically speaking, we know that Quran mentioned Kaaba was built by Prophet Ibrahim السلام, and, and his son Ismail, but there are there's some indication from the, uh, the hadith of Prophet, peace be upon him, it was first built by uh, Prophet Adam, the first human being, alayhi salam. And then later it was disappeared and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered Ibrahim and Ismail to rebuild or build the Kaaba. And one thing also we mentioned about Kaaba, this is the first structure ever built to worship one God. So that's why Kaaba is so special for the whole humanity, for the uh, especially people of uh, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. It's like the followers of uh, Abrahamic faith. So this was built by the, the great, great father of all great uh, prophets and the religions. So he said, you know, Rabbana taqabbal minna. What a beautiful thing. You are doing something beautiful, service, and the path of God, and then they are asking from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept that from them. And then the next verse, 128. Now, here, uh, until the next one, it is some sort of dua, and then also uh, expectation from the future generation, or from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the, the coming generation. And now, Ibrahim السلام, and Ismail, both of them are saying, Rabbana waj'alna muslimaini laka wa min dhurriyatina ummata muslimata lak. So they said, our Lord, and make us Muslims submissive unto you. Not only that, again, it's again and again, we see this in Ibrahim السلام, 
he was not self-centered, self, self, you know, uh, selfish uh, prophet. He, how can he be? Because he's a best uh, example, role model for his community members. He's always, whenever he's asking something, he's always adding, وَمِنْ ذُرِّيَّةِ وَمِنْ ذُرِّيَّةِ Here he said, رَبَّنَا وَجَعَلْنَا مُسْلِمَيْنِ لَكَ وَمِنْ ذُرِّيَّتِنَا أُمَّةً مُسْلِمَةً لَكَ you know, make us Muslims or submissive unto you. And then also of our springs and nation submissive to you. And then since they built Kaaba, now that's the place of worship. They are kindly asking from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to teach how to worship him or how to establish the, um, you know, manasik we're going to discuss means the, the rituals or the steps of Hajj. Hajj is one of uh, the pillars of Islam. So, and it started with Ibrahim alayhi salam. He was saying, Wa arina manasikana, and show us our manasik. And then, Wa tub alayna inna ka rahim, and accept our repentance. Now, again, still, they are in awe and humility. They do something great in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But they are still concerned. What if it doesn't accept by God? What if, you know, you know, they are asking for the forgiveness. They turn to Allah by saying, "What of Alayna?" and accept our repentance. And then finally, they said, "Inna ka anta tawwabur rahim." So you are the one truly who accepts repentance and the most merciful. So since they are speaking uh, about tawbah repentance, and then they use the attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, at-tawwab, the one who is oft forgiving. Now, this dua of Ibrahim alayhi salam also remind me, which we discussed uh, uh, in one of our night sessions. Uh, if you joined us, we were talking about the tafsir uh, uh, Al-Furqan, Surah Al-Furqan, end of Surah Al-Furqan, the last two chapters, uh, the pages. And towards the end of the chapter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was teaching us a dua. Or he was giving the description of the servants of Ar-Rahman. وَعِبَادُ الرَّحْمَنِ الَّذِينَ يَمْشُونَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ هَوْنَا All the way until the end. Finally, he came to this verse, verse saying that وَالَّذِينَ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا هَبْ لَنَا مِنْ أَزْوَاجِنَا وَذُرِّيَّاتِنَا قُرَّةَ أَعْيُنْ وَجَعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ إِمَامًا Again, from the example of Ibrahim alayhi salam, and then this is actually separate. And then the story he was saying, when you pray, pray not only for yourselves, but also, you know, pray, say, our Lord, bestow on us from our wives and our offspring the comfort of our eyes. We enjoy being around them and make us leaders of the muttaqin. This part is really crucial. This is really important, dear brothers and sisters. You know, taqwa, God consciousness. There are different, you know, words used in the Quran. Taqwa, bir, these are really uh, important concepts to reflect upon and then learn from it. And this type of supplication is of course allowed because loving the to have offspring who worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone without partners is a single or, or is, is, is this sign of uh, complete love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why at the beginning of the story from the last Sunday, you know, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Inni linnasi imam, verily I am going to make you an imam, a leader for mankind. And then the first thing. Ibrahim alayhi salam said, وَمِنْ ذُرِّيَّةِ How about my offsprings, O oh Allah? Are you going to make them leaders as well? Now, speaking of, you know, the righteous kids, children, this reminds me a beautiful hadith of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. You know, we are working for not only this dunya, but also hereafter, brothers and sisters. And that's why Prophet, peace be upon him, taught us how to invest not only for this life, but also hereafter. And he said, So he said, when the son of Adam or the daughter of Adam dies, 
his or her beat, you know, ends, except on three things. You know, when we die, the defter al-amal, the book of record is closed. That's it. But except Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in three situations or the cases, and you will still receive, you know, rewards even after you die. And what is that? The first one he said, Sadaqatin Jariya. Sadaqatin Jariya, it's not only Sadaqa, charity, but Jariya means an ongoing charity. For example, you built a school, you know, or a library or something beautiful that people benefit even after you pass away. So, or you, um, you know, do something beneficial for the coming generation. It could be anything. But it's, it's going to be ongoing and beneficial, good for the humanity. That's the first one. And then he said, the second one is, So the knowledge that is being benefited fr uh, from. So you write a book or you record a video, uh, something about beneficial, some, something about either religious or scientific, something that helps people to excel. And then finally, related to our topic, he said, So, or a righteous kid, son or daughter, who supplicates, who prays Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who worships Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for on, on his behalf. So that's that's really important, uh, dear brothers and uh, sisters. There are so you know different things that we invest. And when we hear the, the word investment. Unfortunately, in this culture, the first thing that comes to mind, it's monetary, it's financial investment here and there, you know, increase your wealth. But there are things really more important than, you know, financial investment. And one of them is definitely investing on our kids, make sure that the coming generations are on the righteous path and following the teachings of Quran and the Sunnah of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That is so crucial. And and then inshallah, they are going to send gifts for you after you pass away with du'as and, and, you know, with righteous deeds. Now, in, in the, the verse, uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam said, Wa arina manasikana. So, and he said, and show us our manasik. And as I said, what was manasik? Manasik is the steps of hajj. When we go to hajj, we do certain things. We circumambulate Kaaba, turn around counterclockwise seven times, and then go behind Maqam Ibrahim, which we mentioned last time, and then do uh, two rak'at, prayers, prayer. And then we go uh, the hills, Safa and Marwa, go back and forth. Remember this story of Hajar. And then, you know, you go to Arafah. Arafah is the ninth, ninth day of Dhul Hijjah, which is the most important part of Hajj. And in the word of Prophet, peace be upon him, he said, al hajju Arafah. Hajj is all about Arafah. That's the most important time of the Hajj or the Manasik, uh, the, the steps, one of the steps of um, Hajj. And then we go Aqaba and, you know, uh, stoning Shaitan. And, and then you come back and you do final Tawaf and you complete your Hajj. So this, according to scholars, they said when Ibrahim السلام, said, Wa arina manasikana, oh Allah, please show us the steps of um, you know, Hajj. Then the scholar said, the Jibri then came down and showed the steps of Hajj to Ibrahim السلام, and his son Ismail. So that's, that's how the, the Hajj rituals, rituals started. And final verse, uh, inshallah, we will finish with this one. Finally, Prophet Ibrahim said, Rabbana wabaat fihim rasula minhum yetlu alayhim ayatik. He said, Our Lord, send amongst them a messenger of their own who shall recite unto them your verses and instruct them in the book of Quran. I mean, it's Al-Kitab here, is is Al-Quran. So they said, وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابِ 
that they uh, teach, instruct them uh, whatever is in the book, Al Quran Al Karim, and then Wal Hikmah, and and then also teach them Hikmah, wisdom. And again, the scholar said Hikmah is the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And then he said Wa Yuzakihim, you know, through this Al Quran Al Karim and the wisdom, the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, through these. He can purify them. He can teach them do the path of purification. And then finally, innaka anta al-azizul hakim. Again, at each verse here ends with glorification and saying that verily, O oh Allah, you are the mighty and the wise. Now, this is a beautiful, uh, uh, you know, again, verse that uh, refers to our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Remember, we mentioned last time Ibrahim السلام, had two sons, Ismail and Ishaq. All the biblical prophets came through Ishaq. You know, Ishaq and then Yaqub and then Joseph and then, you know, David, Solomon, uh, Moses, Jesus. Uh, you know, peace be upon all of them. But through Ismail, there was only one prophet and that was Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And, you know, when the companions asked Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, saying that, O Messenger of Allah, tell us about how your prophethood started. And Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said this beautiful statement. He said, Da'wah to Abi Ibrahim wa Bushra Isa ibn Maryam. He said, it started with the supplication of my father Ibrahim and the glad tidings brought forth by Jesus, the son of Mary. You might say, well, you know, what verses this hadith refers to? The first part, da'wah to Abi Ibrahim, you know, the supplication or the dua of my father Ibrahim is the, the verse that I just mentioned. What was Ibrahim alayhi salam saying? Rabbana fihim rasulah. You know, our Lord sent amongst them a messenger of their own. This was directly going to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ibrahim Alayhi Wasallam was the first person who talked about Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam without giving a name. So he was praying. And that's why he said, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, it's the da'wah to Ibrahim, Abi Ibrahim. So the dua, the supplication of my father, grand grandfather Ibrahim. And then the second part, he said, Maryam, And the glad tidings brought forth by Jesus, son of Mary. And this one goes to a verse from Surah Tussaf. And in Surah Tussaf, chapter um, 61, and then the verse number is six, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was telling that Jesus, peace be upon him, said, Inni Rasulullahi ilaykum musaddiqan lima bayna yadayya min tawrah He said, I am the messenger of Allah unto you, Confirming what is before me in the Torah, Torah. And then he said, وَمُبَشِّرًا بِرَسُولِ يَأْتِي مِنْ بَعْدِ اسْمُهُ أَحْمَدِ He said, and giving glad tidings of a messenger to come after me and whose name shall be Ahmed. And the Jesus, peace be upon him, he was the second prophet or the messenger mentioned uh, about our prophet, وسلم, this time by name, saying that Ahmed. This is what the Quran is telling us. So, inshallah, I am going to stop here um, and I'll give you a few minutes uh, break before we start the lecture at 12. Um, and, and next Sunday, I will continue with uh, the se segment section, inshallah, a few more verses from the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam. This time the verse number is 130. And then we'll see how many verses we can do, inshallah. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you. Thank you so much for joining uh, this uh, beautiful Sunday. Uh, just have a two-minute break, and then we'll get back to the screen again, inshallah. Peace be upon all of you.